with a beauty quite divine, perfect in this world of sin, on this silent holy night, there's a fragrance much like hope that it sends upon the wind reaching out to every soul from a lowly manger's crib of a rose of Bethlehem so lovely, pure, and sweet born to glorify the Father Born to wear the thorns for me. There's a rose in Bethlehem, colored red like mercy's blood. Tis the flower of our faith, tis the blossom of God's love. Though its bloom is fresh with youth, surely what will be he knows. For a tear of morning dew is rolling down the rose. Oh, a rose of Bethlehem, how lovely! and sweet born to glorify the Father born to wear the thorns for me born to glorify the Father born to wear the thorns for me Please stand and join in hymn 83, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Every imaginable wrong 
Every smudge and bit of darkness will be completely wiped away by God's gentle, cleansing hand. A lesson from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Say with me, please, Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. And for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. O oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. O oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, for the whole earth trembled before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout with joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. God in Jesus Christ enables our free will and makes our transformation possible. Grace, compassion, kindness, all the fruits of the Spirit are birthed in us through God's work. A lesson from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, <laughs> 
you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went from their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. While they were there, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in manger, because there was no place for them in the end. In that region there were shepherds living the fields. He watched over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who be favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. with folks on the Cheyenne River Reservation and the Pine Ridge in South Dakota. Now, and I got a, a buzz on my phone a moment ago and I stepped aside just to see. Uh, at Emmanuel Church, Whitehorse, uh, it's uh, seven below zero right now. Uh, and it will be 17 below zero before the night is out. Uh, it's wonderful that, that y'all have braved the cold to be here. But in places like that, it's not even possible to do it. They are huddled in their homes. Uh, they are doing everything they can to stay warm. Uh, some of you have been uh, on the Cheyenne River with me, and so you know that it is, uh, it is 50 miles by dirt road to the nearest town outside of the village. And so tonight, uh, we are quite warm, and I ask your prayers for the people of Whitehorse. It's very easy to be sentimental this time of year. In fact, that's part of the, the comfort 
of this night. And tomorrow morning, for that matter. We use this night, we use Christmas to remember. Sometimes we're remembering lights and decorations and, and gifts and meals. But most often, we're looking back to what it was like to gather perhaps in a specific place, whether it was in a church or at home, and to be with people that we love years in the past. I can see in my mind's eye people that have made a huge difference in my life, beloved but long gone. At the 5 o'clock service, we had uh, our Christmas pageant. And some of you know, I, I actually grew up in this church before going away for almost three decades. And so it was kind of a, a mix of the, the moment and the memory, seeing the kids uh, coming down the aisle. I remember my parents, and I remember my brothers, all of us sitting together, actually about right there where the Miller's family is sitting. <laughs> Except for my oldest brother. My oldest brother always managed to be an acolyte or a, or a lay reader on the great feast days of the church. Before we had pews, we had folding chairs. And I'll always remember the Christmas when Jamie Brock fell asleep and fell out of his chair right into the middle of the aisle. <laughs> After we got pews, and actually this is kind of recent because of some folks that mm -hmm. came over here from another church uh, there was one person on, on, on Christmas Eve, uh, he would sit over here, and if you'd listen just, just closely enough, you could hear him snoring, you know? And it wasn't the sermon that did that to him, it actually started <laughs> before the sermon. Uh, he, he just thought that the church was a very quiet, comfortable place. I remember, I remember as a child the smell of, of incense, carrying prayers up to heaven. I remember the words of the gospel according to Luke, the King James Version that I actually memorized in elementary school. I remember waking up before everybody else in the house and having to be quiet to go down and play with whatever toys that Santa had brought by the light of the Christmas tree, having to wait on everybody else to wake up. And honestly, if it took too long, I went and woke them up myself. I remember my, my first Christmas married and away from home and, and doing things very, very differently. I remember the first Christmas of my children. And I remember the last Christmas with my father and the first Christmas without him. I remember the first Christmas without my mom. And years later, I remember the one without my brother. All of us remember special moments associated with special days. But tonight, tonight is a bridge. It's a bridge moment that actually allows us to step into the past. A bridge moment. But bridges go in two directions. And so does this moment. You see, we can absolutely gather in commemoration and in celebration of what was, of 2,000-year-old events in Scripture and memories from our own past. But tonight is perhaps most importantly about tomorrow. The nativity, simply put, the birth. The one we remember tonight, the birth in Bethlehem but also the eternal manifestation of that birth and what we proclaim as the incarnation. I think the Apostle John says it best, the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. The eternal, the divine. In the words of the hymn, veiled in flesh the God had see, Hail the incarnate deity. Without a doubt, this moment is about what was, but even more importantly, 
It's about what is and what will be. Now, most of you can't see it. And particularly on a dark night, you can't make out what it is. But there is a window right there in that transept that proclaims a particularly powerful truth about this moment. There was a child in this parish who loved Christmas. In first grade, the assignment was to draw the meaning of Christmas. They had crayons, they had paper, and all the children set to work with their drawings. His classmates drew Christmas trees and reindeer and presents and Santa Claus. And the teacher went around to each desk and asked each child about their drawing. And she got lots of explanations about Christmas celebrations and presents and a whole lot about Santa. But when she got to Gregory Thomas, she looked down on a picture of the manger scene and was given this very simple but 100% accurate statement from that little boy, that first grader. Teacher asked him what it was and he just pointed and said this is what Christmas is about. And that's why that, that window is of the nativity scene, the manger. Gregory died when he was 14 years old. He was killed by an impaired driver. His parents kept that drawing to this day from first grade. And when the parish added those windows, the ones around him, 19 years ago, they honored Gregory with that window with that scene, the one that meant everything to him. It's a memory, but it proclaims Christmas. It proclaims the birth of Christ, whether we're gathering on Christmas Eve or the 4th of July. And most importantly, that image is a bridge forward. A reminder that Christ came into this world, that Christ was born so that we, you and I, might understand that every life is filled with his presence. That each and every one of us, all of you that are sitting here, are beloved. And because of this great gift of incarnation, we have the promise of life everlasting. From Isaiah, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Interestingly enough, that's also the name of the church in White Horse on the cold prairie tonight. Emmanuel, God with us. That's why you're here. That's what tonight, that's what Christmas is actually about. Then and now and every moment of all the tomorrows to come, God is with us. Merry Christmas. Please stand.
believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 6. In priests, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for, for those, those who are alone, alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the, for the victims, victims of, of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those, for those who minister, minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Andrew and Dorsey, our bishops retired, Rob and Paul, our priests, Pat, our retired Piedmont Convocation Deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for all those on our parish prayer list, especially those in our parish now with COVID and flu, for all those in our community who are cold, for all those without homes. For our friends on the Cheyenne River and the Pine Ridge and all those in our country impacted by the cold storm. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For the people of St. Matthew's, for our preschool, free clinic, and food pantry. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and we praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. Gracious Father, we ask spiritual growth for ourselves our families and friends, and especially for our family, St. Matthews. Grant us growth and understanding and willingness to be your body in this world. Empower us to live the mission of Christ, to preach, teach, heal, and make disciples. In joyful thanksgiving for the blessing of your presence in our lives, compel us to share you with everyone we meet. May our numbers increase, our commitment deepen, our lives be joyfully yours. Make us a God-centered people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I, uh, I do want to thank our uh, our choir, our servers, our audiovisual folks, our ushers, all those uh, who are out on a very very cold night to help. I hope make each of y'all feel at home. Uh, for the folks that are watching us online. Uh, the good news is that we'll be back here at 10 o'clock in the morning, and you're welcome to join us in person. Uh, and then uh, on uh, next Friday night, the 30th, we'll be hosting our Celebration of Hope, where we lift up and honor and remember those uh, who have died over the past year. Um, it's a difficult time of year to experience grief, and looking back is a part of what we do. And so this is an opportunity to come together and acknowledge those very different emotions during a time when so much is about joyful celebration. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts <coughs> with thanksgiving. Rising to the stars and to the sea, we know. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. <coughs> This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! sisters and brothers, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All right.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God... Ah. Excuse me. How could I forget Silent Night? Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing our hymn for going forth, Joy to the World. 